Hello coders and thanks for joining us for another C Sharp Fundamentals tutorial. Today we're going to be talking about properties and we're going to be using the code from our last tutorial so if you want to know how to write this code and you um, and you haven't looked at that tutorial yet go ahead and check it out but otherwise we're going to go ahead and, and press onward and talk about properties okay so let's go ahead and get into it so in our programs we want to have full control over which files can see and use these variables within this class okay and uh, currently these variables are all set to private because unless we dictate in C sharp that we want our variable to be public it's going to be defaulted to private so only things within this class can see these variables and oftentimes we will have multiple classes and we will want these classes to be interacting with each other let's say I have a player class and I want to be able to modify the enemy's health well I can't modify the enemy's health currently because it's uh, the health variable is private okay and so there's going to be instances where we want certain classes to be able to look at certain variables and uh, and if we don't have this interaction then our uh, our programs are going to be able to communicate as effectively um, as otherwise. Okay, so we want to have full control over which files can see and use these variables. More control equals more stability in the program. Okay, so we don't want files, we don't want classes being able to modify these variables when they don't need to be uh, modifying these variables. Okay, and then we have, um, let's see, the third point I make here is properties can define either read or write privileges or both. Okay, so let's talk about read or write privileges because I don't think I've ever talked to you guys about that okay if we look at this example where we say string name equals caveat -y. okay name has write privileges because it is accepting caveat -y and it's modifying name so if we're modifying a variable we're writing to that variable thus that variable has write privileges okay now I created an, um, a new name variable here for an example below okay so we're gonna talk about a read privilege okay so new name has a read privilege because we're able to access and retrieve the value from it okay and so what we're doing is we're pulling the value from new name and we're putting it into name okay so here we have a relationship of name is being written to so name has write privileges and new name is being read from and getting the value retrieved so new name has a read privilege okay and so what we do with our properties is we're able to define um, if these values can be read to written to or read from written to or both okay so let's talk about the syntax when we're creating properties now if let's say we want to um, as I was saying before we want to we want our player class to be able to modify the health of the enemy okay so we want our enemy to be written to essentially okay so and we also want it to be read from okay so our player is going to want to know um, first of all how much health the enemy has so it knows if it, it needs to stop attacking and then second of all if the uh, and it, needs, it needs to be able to modify the health so it can actually kill the enemy okay so what we're going to do to define the syntax is we're going to start off by saying that this property is going to be public okay and then what we do is we uh, we set a return type okay so for modifying damage our return type is going to be an integer because damage is an int so we're gonna say our return type is int and then what we're gonna do is since or I'm sorry not uh, not damage but health and so since um, we're modifying health and health is lowercase by convention our property properties by naming convention are going to be the capitalized version of the variable we want to modify so our health property is going to be capital H health okay and so then we come down and we place our curly braces now within the curly braces we have two C sharp keywords that we're going to talk about we have get okay and then we have set all right, so we have a, a getter. So this is otherwise known as uh, getter, and this is otherwise known as a setter. Okay, so you'll hear those terms tossed around a little bit um, in the industry. 
Now our getter is going to return a value, okay? So this is, the, the getter is essentially the, um, the read privilege. So are we able to read the value of health? Okay, and the setter is essentially the write privilege because what the setter does is it sets a value to our health variable. Okay, so this is our write privilege. Now our getter is, let's, I'm going to extend this so it's a little bit more readable. Uh, so our get is going to return a value and essentially what that value is going to be is the, the variable we want to return and that's it. So this is all our get is going to do, okay? Now you'll see a lot of times the syntax is going to look like this, just so it's a little bit more tight and uh, a little bit more clean. Now our set is going to have, um, it's going to be able to set the value to our health variable. So what we do is we say health equals and then C sharp's keyword value. And value is whatever value uh, is on the right side of the assignment operator. Okay, and I'll talk about that in just a minute. All right, so let's see. I, I believe this is it for now. Let's go over to our program.cs file and let's try to use this property. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to say, um, first of all, for now, I'm going to comment out these so we don't have a bunch of console.write lines. And what I wanna do is I wanna access Kvieti's health. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm just going to do a console.write line. And I'm going to say cave yetis health is. And I'm going to say cave yeti dot. So we're going to use the dot operator. And then you can scroll down and you can see uh, the health property that we created. And properties are going to be denoted by this little wrench icon. Okay, so I'm going to access health. And you can notice that it's capital H, not lowercase h. All right, if I come back to enemy and I comment out this property, you'll see I won't be able to see any sort of health variable. So I can say dot and it's gone, it's missing now. Okay, so let's bring that property back so we can use it. All right, so caveat dot health um, and I'll, all I'm doing is reading that value now. And what I wanna say is, um, I guess I could just put a period there now. Okay, so let's run this. Okay, Kvieti's health is 100. All right. And so what this is, it's a, it's a read operation. It's a read privilege. I'm able to retrieve the value of health and, and uh, concatenate it into this string. Okay, so let's say I wanted to write to health. Okay, so the, the, way, this work is, the way this works is I say kvieti.health equals 90 okay and this is a write privilege because what i'm doing is i'm writing this value into health and so what you can think about is if kvieti is on the left side uh, of the assignment operator it's a write operation if kvieti is on the i'm sorry i think i got that mixed up if, if kvieti is on the left side of the assignment operator it's a write operation if kvieti that health is on the right side of the assignment operator. It's a read uh, privilege. Okay, so another thing I could do is say kvieti health equals kvieti dot health. And so here we have a write privilege, and here we have a read privilege. Okay, and since we set the, uh, I'm going to keep repeating this so. Since we set a setter, okay, so the setter is being accessed here. And since we set a getter, the getter is being accessed here because we're getting the value and putting it into this new variable. Okay. Okay, so now if I run this again, then I should see 100 and, and then I should see 90. Okay, so you can see that we successfully modified the Kvieti's health from um, <clears throat> program.cs. Okay, so there's a couple more cool things that we can do with properties. One, we could totally do away with the getter, okay? And, or we could totally get away or do away with the setter. So we can use either or. So we can say this 
this uh, this property can only be read or this property can only be written to now typically whenever you create a property it's at least going to be readable okay there's not really any reason or scenario in which your property doesn't need to be readable so um, whenever you create a property go ahead and get into the habit of at least creating a getter and then basically what we're going to decide is do we want uh, do we want this property to be modifiable or do we just want other classes to be able to read what the current value is and so if you don't want it to be modifiable you won't create a setter if you do want it to be modifiable modifiable then you can create a setter and so there's a couple things that we can do with the setter we could use an if statement that says something like if okay so we can say if value is less than a hundred then we can modify the health value and what this is saying is Essentially, if we have a, an enemy and his max health is 100, then we don't want to be able to modify the health above 100. So we don't want to say health is equal to, uh, actually I'll say less than or equal to. So we don't want to say health is equal to 101 because that is going to um, overcome the cap of the enemy's health. So let's go ahead and test this. If I go to program.cs, um, and I want to say, okay, KVID's health, and this might be a mistake on a, a developer who's working on the project with you, or it could be a mistake in some logic that you have in your code where you're increasing the value of KVID's health for some reason. Okay, and so if I say KVID health is equal to 120, um, then what you might expect to see here is 120, but instead it's, it's going to remain to be 100. Um, actually, yes, it should remain to be 100. So if I start debugging, you can see that the KV Yeti's health did not go to 120. Um, and so that's how this is going to work. So what we can do is we, ha we can have conditions within our setter to uh, prevent um, improper writing. So we use conditions in our setter to prevent illegal writing okay to the variable all right guys so that's actually going to conclude our discussion on properties um, if you have any questions about how properties work or you want to see more examples of them go ahead and feel free to post in the comment section below uh, if you like this tutorial please subscribe we're coming out with more uh, more c-sharp tutorials in the future we're about to be closing up the series actually, but we're gonna have some C-sharp challenges coming up. Uh, we have Unity scripting, we have web development, we have Unity game development. So if you're into any of that, go ahead and subscribe. This is definitely the channel for you. As always, this has been a Renaissance Coders tutorial. Thanks for watching.